Good morning, Grace Lutheran. I think my computer is still getting ready here. Here we go. So uh, good morning and uh, welcome to this Tuesday morning on this rainy day for the devotion this morning since it is raining and I was reminded of baptism today. I'm going to use a Thanksgiving for baptism, uh, read some Bible verses about baptisms from Romans 6, and then we'll have some prayer. Um, so I would ask your prayers, though, uh, for the George Olson's family. George passed away, um, let's see, Sunday afternoon, and his and the immediate family was able to go into the nursing home to visit him, and so they had some time with him. Um, there will be a private family kind of memorial prayer service this week, but then we will have a service, a memorial service and uh, lunch when we are able to do that, likely this summer sometime. So, but please remember Joan and Chris and Linda and Britta and Krista and all the family in your prayers as they mourn George's passing. Um, so um, know that there are others too that have had losses and uh, it's been a hard time to lose somebody because of uh, really having to modify how we celebrate people's lives and have funeral services. And I also thought that was a reason why it's appropriate maybe to think about our baptism today and how we have that promise of life in all things because God has acted for us. And that as we celebrate in this Easter season, we are celebrating um, the resurrection to life that is ours through Jesus. And so I begin this morning with this thanksgiving for baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. You are the fire of rebirth. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for cloud and rain, for dew and snow. Your waters are below us, around us, above us. Our life is born in you. You are the fountain of resurrection. Praise to you for your saving waters. Noah and the animals survived the flood. Hagar discovers your well. The Israelites escape through the sea and they drink from your gushing rock. Naaman washes his leprosy away and the Samaritan woman will never be thirsty again. At the font, holy God, we pray. Praise to you for the water of baptism and for your word that saves us in this water. Breathe your spirit into all who are gathered here and into all creation. Illumine our days, enliven our bones, dry our tears, wash away the sin within us and drown the evil around us. Satisfy all our thirst with your living water, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And I'd like to read um, from Romans 6, um, and I'm reading from the message version of the Bible, which is a very uh, contemporary language version, and um, it kind of just gives an explanation of what we know and believe and trust about baptism. So this is from Romans 6 um, in uh, the message, from the message version. So what do we do? Keep on sinning so God can keep on forgiving? I should hope not. If we've left the country where sin is sovereign, how can we still live in our old house there? Or didn't you realize we packed up and left there for good? That is what happened in baptism. When we went under the water, we left the old country of sin behind. When we came up out of the water, we entered into the new country of grace a new life in a new land. That's what baptism into the life of Jesus means. When we are lowered into the water, it is like the burial of Jesus. When we are raised up out of the water, it is like the resurrection of Jesus. Each of us is raised into a light-filled world by our Father so that we can see where we're going in our new grace sovereign country. Could it be any clearer? Our old way of life was nailed to the cross with Christ, a decisive end to that sin miserable life, no longer at sin's every beck and call. What we believe is this. 
If we get included in Christ's sin conquering death, we also get included in his life saving resurrection. We know that when Jesus was raised from the dead, it was a signal of the end of death as the end. Never again will death have the last word. When Jesus died, he took sin down with him, but alive, he brings God down to us. From now on, think of it in this way. Sin speaks a dead language that means nothing to you. God speaks your mother tongue and you hang on every word. You are dead to sin and alive to God. That's what Jesus did. That means you must not give sin a vote in the way you conduct your lives. Don't give it the time of day. Don't even run little errands that are connected with that old way of life. Throw yourselves wholeheartedly and full time, remembering you've been raised from the dead, into God's way of doing things. Sin can't tell you how to live. After all, you're not living under that old tyranny any longer. You're living in the freedom of God. We do live in the freedom of God. We live the resurrection life. The old has passed away. The new has come. And we are people of new life. So even in these days when life is different, we are people of new life. Um, I love the phrase here where it said, when Jesus died, he took sin down, but from now on, when he, but alive, he brings God down to us. We know that God is with us, and in the promise of our baptism, we live with God's presence. We live with the newness of life. We live with the hope of the resurrection, and so we are people of the resurrection, and we are called to live our lives, sharing life, however we can, in whatever circumstances we find ourselves. And so know that you are someone who lives. You live in God through Christ and that there is nothing that takes God's presence away from you. And so in this day, remember your baptism. As you look out the window and see the rain uh, washing away the grime of winter, as you see, um, the green coming. I know you can't really see through my window with the blinds, but the little tree outside my window burst forth in blossom yesterday and today. And it's just to me a sign of that life that is all around us, even in uh, kind of anxious times and um, times when we are keeping a death toll, um, that there is life and that we have that promise of life. And so uh, thanks be to God for his promises and his words. Um, I'd like to uh, use the prayer of the day, which will be coming up uh, for this Sunday, but also today would like to pray for um, kind of our teachers, our educators, those who work in the schools, because this week is also Teacher Appreciation Week. And I know teachers have really been having to be creative and uh to teach their students um, distant, with distance learning, and they are doing all kinds of things. And I know I'm gonna name the teachers. I went to the directory and was trying to remember everybody who works in the schools, who teaches or works in the schools, and I know that I am probably gonna miss somebody. So I apologize for that and know that you are included. If you are a teacher, an educator, somebody who is at work through our schools, I'll also include our Sunday school teachers again, who help us uh, help our kids know what it means that they are baptized people of God, to hear that story of God's love and to know God's promises. And so um, let us pray. Almighty God, your son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. And God, we do give you thanks for those who teach, who teach in our school systems, um, who, who give their lives for children that they might know that they are loved and that they help them to learn and to see the wonder and awe in the world around us and that they just expand their understandings and their minds. And so this day we give you thanks for teachers and we, we uh, remember and ask you to bless these people who work in our schools, Macy and Janine, Paul, um, Jen, Sharon, Gia, Lori, Carolyn, Robin, Amanda, Matt, Jerry, Jessica, Robin, Dale, Claire, Mary Beth, 
Lisa, Kayla, Robin, Jody, Alicia, Lisa, Sherry, Roland, Susan, Becky, Elaine, Diane, Gretchen, Sharon, Keith and Jessica, Katie, Tammy, Daryl, Brian, John, and Woody. And all those whose names I maybe have forgotten, God, we thank you for these teachers, both active and retired, who have shaped our world through the lives of our children. We also ask your presence, O oh God, and your comfort for all those who mourn, especially the Olsons on the death of George, and for those who also have suffered losses. Just surround them and sustain them and know we look for the day when we can gather together in person with them to comfort them and celebrate the lives of these saints who now rest from their labor and who are with you. Gracious God, bless us in this day and help us to live our baptisms in whatever way presents itself to us as we are your people and give you thanks for the life that is ours through Jesus Christ. Amen. So blessings to you this week and know there is a couple other events for children tomorrow afternoon at three o'clock. Lisa is again doing some games and activities for the kids on Facebook and uh, part of it will be the scavenger hunt to find things for the children's reading for next Sunday. And then Brian will do the devotion on Thursday morning at nine o'clock. Um, you can pray for the council that meets this evening through Zoom and uh, for all the work that we continue to do and for all the ministry partners that we have that are at work in our community. And uh, so blessings to you this day and receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So have a good day, and we'll see you again.